What's up, folks? It is Friday, and you're here on the Outpost Unknown YouTube channel listening to another episode of Exhuming the X-Files. My name is Matthew, and I'm joined once again by Jeremy. How y'all doing? And um, our, our minds are full of lies and falsehoods because we are right back into the mystery of what happened to Scully with One Breath, written by Glenn Morgan and James Wong, directed by R.W. Goodwin. That was my question. We kind of answered this a couple episodes back, but if you're new, we'll kind of revisit it here if this is your first time listening. Uh, Jeremy, do you remember it being longer between when Scully was abducted to when they found her? <laughs> yeah. No, I... There was three weeks, but it felt like they didn't recover her until, like, the episode before the end of the season is what it felt like. to me. Yeah. And this is only episode eight. So this is the... I mean, we are a third of the way through the through season two. And I, I would have laid money down. If you were to bet me, when does Scully reappear after she's abducted? I would have been like way down the line. Uh, latter half of season two. Um, turns out completely wrong. <laughs> We've already found her. So let's go ahead and dive into one breath. Uh, starts out with the BB gun execution of a garter snake. Um. <laughs> Scully's mom, which they refer to her as Mrs. Scully, but I don't know that they've ever said her name in since she's been showing up over and over again. That's a good point. I don't think they have. Let me look it up. But she's she's telling a story about, uh, and it's a flashback scene of Scully being instructed by her older brothers how to use a BB gun, and then they find a snake, and then these three kids just murder this snake with just murder in their faces. And then they finally kill the snake and Scully feels super bad about it. But no matter how much she squeezed this snake, she couldn't bring it back to life. So it was showing that she was compassionate. I thought it was a really stupid sequence. I like I hated it the whole time I was watching it. Cause I just, nobody was really believable. It I, feels weird. It feels very strange. Cause I'm kind of like, why why are we really what does this relate to um and it again yeah it, it just felt strange the voiceover was kind of weird yeah. um, not one of the best prologues we've seen for sure and then it cuts back to real wife with Mulder and scully's mom and they unwrap this thing that they're getting from some vendor and it's dana scully's gravestone mm -hmm. title screen yeah not so, interested. Don't care at this point. <laughs> I, it should have had some punch to it. Like, oh no, Dana's dead. But the scene yeah. was so lame. It should have been. It should have been Mulder walking in a uh, cemetery as we kind of follow him around, and then he stops, and then kind of leans down, and then it cuts to Dana Scully's tombstone marker, and Mulder like putting some flowers at it and then cut to title credits because at that point we as an audience are like, holy shit, is she dead? Like, is she not coming back? I want to watch more. What's going on? That's how it should have done. In my so, opinion. Yeah. It, it needed, it needed some oomph. It needed some yeah. reveal that made us feel something. And I felt nothing. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this is, and you might remember a couple episodes ago where I remember falsely, but this is the one that begins with Mulder in the middle of the night, laying on his side on his couch, and he's watching VHS porn. Yeah. Because you can hear chicks moaning. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets a call, and it he finds out that Scully has just been found, and she's at a hospital. So he books it on over to that hospital. Bust into the room, just immediately starts yelling at everybody. Like you have this kind of hot redhead standing over Scully or Dana's body, who probably but, should have been Kristen last episode. Oh, yeah, yeah I, like, <laughs> she's she's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, and she's got her hands out over her body, like he's she's sensing something from her, and she says something about Mulder bringing in positive vibes or something like that. <laughs> he starts yelling at nurses. He starts yelling at the doctor, like that passion that he showed during, uh, was it Dwayne? Dwayne Bergen <laughs> a couple of episodes ago. Dwayne Barry? 
Dwayne Barry. Yeah, Dwayne <laughs> Barry. When he starts getting in Dwayne Barry's face about what Dwayne Barry did to her, yeah. and because of the blood, we got to see that again because he wants to know what happened, what they're doing to her, or to get her out of this state because he's just fucking living. He's he's a little. I wrote in my notes. His he is going ape shit. Like he is freaking the fuck out. He's like, who brought her here? Was it the military? Was it government? Like what? Because yeah, I mean, he is. He took the time here. They're just like, all right, David, you just go, just 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 run with this, and we're gonna put the cameras on you, and we're just gonna get. And he was screaming at that poor doctor. That actor was just getting berated yeah. by him. <laughs> He went for it, and I wrote down great scene. I really liked his performance in this right here. Really good. And then he he goes up to the side of the bed, and they're trying to... It it was... They use imagery throughout this episode that shows that Scully is there, but not there. in, In the imagery, Scully is sitting in a boat in a very foggy lake, and she's tied to a dock. And there are people standing on the shoreline. Sometimes it's Mulder. Sometimes it's sister. It's her sister. Sometimes it's both of them. Sometimes it's this nurse. And they use that as kind of a Scully is still there, but she's drifting right on that edge of death. I, I love that, that was, imagery. It's very good. Yeah, I like it quite a bit. Yeah, that's cool. Um, he, do we ever? By the way, do we ever see Scully's brothers? Do they ever pop up? Because we met. That's the other thing that kind of made me. I was a little irked by the prologue, is because we're establishing like her brothers and stuff, but they're never here. Like we don't I, see them as adults here at her bedside or anything. So I also like the prologue just is weird to me. It seems so out of place compared to the rest of the episode. I I forgive them because Scully's sister is a smoke show. <laughs> wow, what a hottie! And she's got a choker on too. Hmm. So Mulder goes home. He tries to conjure up X. Apparently, they have some sort of signal where he puts a tape X on his window, shines a light through it. Like he needs answers. He needs answers right now. But X doesn't doesn't come through. Goes back to the hospital. Rohickey shows up in this tux with flowers. <laughs> like he combed his hair, probably bathed for the first time that week. You know, I love this because Fuller's so like Frohickey, and it, because he's always like we're making jokes about him being a pervert towards Scully and everything. But this actually gave some like pathos to his character here, where it's like he he's like you know I, I'm paying my respects. I really really like Scully. I respect her, and you know it's. I feel horrible that she is in this state. I like this. It was, little it was very sweet of him to show up like yeah. that, you know, very, very respectful to her. You know, he, he yeah. they didn't crack any jokes like they normally do. So uh, they get a hold of, don't they, how do they get DNA from her? Like they didn't take a blood sample. But, there's a lot. There's a, yeah. There's a lot of blood there. There because it comes into play later on too. Someone trying to take a blood sample of her. Real quick before before we move on, I, I wanted to point out that the hospital tells Mulder that they have no idea how she got there or what's wrong with her. That she's just kind of comatose. Because eventually, when Mulder cools down and talks to his doctor, he's like, "We have no fucking idea. We just walked in and she was just there. She's hooked up." And they really they establish a really important point that this sort of whole episode hinges on, which is Scully's wish in her, in her will to be sort of put to death if she's ever comatose and Mulder signed it as her witness. Like Scully does not want to be in a vegetative state. She wants him to pull the plug. Um, And, and that's kind of like the big thing because Mulder throughout this episode is like trying to figure out a way to bring her back because the family's going to pull the plug on her essentially. So we got that sort of proverbial ticking clock episode, which uh, is important for the rest of it. But yeah, they get her, they get her DNA somehow. And then they go to the lone gunman and the lone gunman analyze it. They send it to some hacker guy. They find that she has some additional encoding on her DNA but branched. whatever they call it branched DNA, but it, it's been altered somehow 
but they can tell that whatever experiments they were running or whatever there it's over with whatever has been done to her has been done and now they're just like even if she were completely healthy she probably a, a healthy human body wouldn't survive the damage that's been caused to her yeah i do like uh in this moment with uh <clears throat> the lone gunman i actually made a notice because i love this show as well did you ever watch earth 2 no Earth 2, now I don't know how well it holds up now as an adult, but as a kid, I fucking loved, loved Earth 2. It's got like Clancy Brown in it, and essentially like the basic premise is Earth is dying, and they all, like uh, a last little colony of humans, go find this other planet to try to colonize it, and they have to fight against the local like alien populace that's there and stuff. Super, super awesome show. Uh, And... um, Oh God, not Fro Hickey. Um, who's the guy with the long blonde hair? One of the lone gunmen. I forget his name off the top of my head. <laughs> no idea. But he he mentions, hey, he's like, hey, you want to come over on Saturday night because we're going to be nitpicking the scientific inaccuracies of Earth Two. And as a fan of Earth Two, I was like, oh, that is so that was so awesome. So yeah, if you any listeners out there, if you're interested in kind of a cool. 90s sci-fi show i think it only lasted one season before it got canceled check out earth 2 it's it's pretty good uh, we so get go back ahead. to yep we get back to dana and there's this creepy nurse that gives her a kiss she <laughs> she's hovering over very very close like uncomfortably close telling dana like don't go away yet hold on for whatever Hold on Hold to your life on for one more and, day. And then she Things gives Dana a kiss and then kind of backs away. It's like, okay, you got friendly nurses in the ICU. Just Problematic kissing nurses kissing on their patients. <laughs> then, uh, what is it? Okay, so he, he sh- or they, they do a blood draw at that point. And then some old lady crashes in the ICU right next to him. There's all this hullabaloo. And this guy, Mulder, had noticed earlier, like, shoplifts her blood sample and just starts running away with it. Yeah. So he starts chasing after him. They go down to a parking garage. And he almost gets just tackled by X, just showing up after the blue. (laughs) Or out of the blue saying, you can't. Yeah, sweaty X. (laughs) Sticks a gun in Mulder's face. Tell tells him like, and it's it's clear just like when Mulder went to the senator's office to go talk to him, he just shows up at just the right time to say, "Fuck off, Mulder! I don't want you anywhere near this. This is this is I want this to just go on the way that it is." Yeah, and he, he somehow tell, he tells him, "Look, let Scully die and move on with your life." He literally tells that to Mulder. He's like, "She's dead." There's nothing you can do. I don't want to die. You're putting me in jeopardy. Get the fuck out of here. Stop chasing this dude. <laughs> it, guy is not nice. <laughs> but it's just it's just bullshit that's coming out of his mouth. Like there's no there's no carrot on a stick. There's no truths coming out or revelations or anything like that. It's just crap coming out of X's mouth. But he breaks away, continues the chase, ends up sneaking up on the guy point blank gun to the back of his head gets the sample back from him but then he gets distracted again and x shows up and just executes the guy just blasts yeah he's like you want to know the things that i know and the things i have to do and boom just shoots the guy dead right in front of Mulder, like a boss and he's like now get out of here because i've got to, i've got to fucking clean up this mess so he goes back to Dana and their mom, the sister and Fox are talking about what they're going to do. And they're like, okay, according to the will, she doesn't meet this threshold of mental activity. So she does not do not resuscitate her. Don't, don't leave her on life support. And Fox is like, we don't have any answers at all about what happened to her, where she's been, what got her to this state. And you guys just want to kill her? And Dana's sister's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't want to know why she's dying. She just needs to go. Yeah, she's like, hey, she signed the will. You watched her. You were her witness. These are her wishes. They they do a lot 
um, they kind of throw the respect thing in Mulder's face the whole time. Even the mom does. Uh, who I looked it up, her, her name is Margaret. Margaret Scully. Um, and so she's like, look, you know, you respected her. She respected you. We're going to respect her wishes because, you know, that's the way she wanted it. Like, it doesn't matter how she ended up in this state. All that matters is she's in this state and she told all the people she loved she did not want to stay alive in this type of state. So we got to we got to pull that plug. Now, the question I have for you, which I thought was kind of interesting uh, when it happened, she when the mom gets up and it almost seems at the time that they're just going to go pull the plug right then and there. It turns yeah. out that they don't um, for whatever reason. <laughs> it was a little strange to me. But the mom was like, hey, you know, this is for family only, but you can be here. You and know, he's because, like, nah. Yeah. So my question to you is, why do you think Mulder said no? Like, if you were him in that situation and you thought that they were going to go pull the plug on her right then and there, would you want to be there for that? Or would you say, no. I'm not doing that. It seemed weird that he said no. Yeah. It was way out of character that he would just leave at that point and not be with. And I think doesn't, doesn't the sister even say something about like you need to, or cause the sister senses that there's a love thing going on between them, at least to a point. Yeah. And he, she straight tell or straight up tells him, it's like, this is your last chance to go to her and tell her how you feel about her and she'll hear it, but it'll be the last chance. And he's like, nah, it's weird. He doesn't even say anything to either. He just shakes his head and I couldn't find anything when I was doing kind of research on the episode afterwards. I do have the DVD. So maybe there's an audio commentary track that I can listen to at some point. Um, but I, yeah, it just felt so jarringly out of character. Now everybody kind of grieves their own way. So maybe you could kind of um, sort of like, well, this just Mulder wouldn't be able to handle it if he was there. I, I guess I could understand that. But the way he's been portrayed throughout the series didn't feel like that would be a choice that he would make. No, it wouldn't. He would he would go. But anyway, he doesn't in order to go receive some football metaphors from Skinner about what he should be doing with his career, which was weird. <laughs> Is this um, the scene where we're mul- no? This isn't the scene yet where Skinner goes into his Vietnam story, right? No, no, that's at the gotcha. very, very end. Gotcha. Okay. Um, there's this brief scene where the cigarette smoking man visits Skinner and ignores his "Do not smoke" sign. That's then- funny. That's funny. I actually, um, I actually wrote that down where. Where <laughs> cigarette smoking goes in, he pulls out a cigarette, and Skinner's like, "No, no, no, no." And looks down at the at the to the no smoking sign on his desk now. Cigarette smoking man not only lights up in front of Skinner, takes a puff, but then walks over and immediately puts it out in the cigarette ashtray that's there that shouldn't be there if Skinner no longer is allowing smoking in his office. It was just like I'm gonna take a couple puffs. I'm I'm the alpha male here. I'll take a couple puffs and put out this full full cigarette right there, right in front of you, and walk out good on the cancer man or cigarette smoking man or whatever throw your dick on the table motor comes in he gets this fucking sports ball metaphor about what he should be doing with his career when Mulder asks him for help to track down the cancer man or the cigarette i'm not gonna call him cancer that's not who he is and uh then we get back to um Kind of that artsy, weird scenes with Scully. She's laying on a table. And there's something I didn't write in my notes. But if you notice all of the scenes where she's laying flat on her back, like, why is her chest just out there? <laughs> like, like just. They're like anyway. rockets. They're sticking they, straight up. Yeah. And it, that's not what girls normally look like when they're laying on their back. I mean, she's just. My, yeah anyway she's laying on a table she's not talking she doesn't have any talking lines she's in this kind of like hallway and her dad shows up her dead dad in full navy dress and walks up to her and has this kind of touching moment it probably should have been better than what it was 
Um, but I saw what they were going for, so I, I was forgiving of that scene a little bit. But he basically yeah. says, you know, it's like, we will we will see each other again, and probably soon, but not now. And then she comes back to the weird, or he comes back to the weird kissy nurse, like standing over, yeah. like whispering to her again, you need to, you need to yeah. stave off death. What's what's cool about this scene is this is kind of like the sequel to Beyond the Sea in a way. And I was thinking this as I was watching it, but then when I did the research of this, which we'll talk about after we finish up this conversation, is how this links back to Beyond the Sea. Because my thought was, and I wrote this down, Scully's dad comes back. We get to hear the message that Luther Lee Boggs couldn't tell her in Beyond the Sea. He says he loved her. Because if you remember at the end of Beyond the Sea, Bog says, hey, come to my execution and I will give you the message that your dad was trying to tell you this entire time. And Scully chooses not to hear that message. She says, I, I know what my dad, he was my dad. Like, I know. She, she didn't do that. At the end of this episode, kind of fast forwarding, Mulder has the chance to basically confront the guy who has done this to Scully or was part of it or whatever. And he chooses not to do that. He chooses to be with Scully at the end. So it's kind of like a, a really sort of poet, like, uh, like George Lucas, it's poetry. It rhymes, <laughs> right? So each one of them make a choice that they choose not to learn a piece of information that they find is very important to themselves to be with be with them themselves or whatever with, you know, Scully to be with Mulder when he's in the hospital um, after he got shot during the bog sort of escape sort of stuff. And then Mulder deciding to come to Scully and be with her in the hospital rather than learning the information that he could. That's how I got it. Was that how it kind of sort of came across to you when you watched it? I didn't even think of that angle, but yeah, that's, that's great stuff, man. So uh, Mulder ends up getting informed while he was down in the cafeteria by somebody that had done something obvious in front of him. The location <laughs> of the cigarette smoking man shows up, points a gun at him, like j- just blasts him because the cigarette smoking man totally didn't see him coming. Starts yelling I love at him. That line, he's like, don't try to throw at me. I've watched presidents die. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cool line. I was like, Jesus, this guy has, he gives no fucks. Yep. And he's just like, I don't have a wife. I don't have children. I don't have a family. All I have, I have a little bit of power. Like, yeah. I'm miserable is basically what he was saying. Yeah, I quoted, so, he says, I'm in the game because I believe what I'm doing is right. And, uh, Mulder decides that he's not going to learn because he doesn't learn anything. He, the cigarette smoking man just speaks in the same riddle that X and Deep Throat mostly did. So he doesn't learn anything. And this is the first time we've seen Mulder actually interact with the cigarette smoking man, right? Yeah. I think, well, no, I guess, I guess, I guess uh, the cigarette smoking man does talk to Mulder briefly in that one previous episode where he's like, you've, you've found nothing. Maybe at the end of season one, when they close down the X Files, but this is the first time, like with no one else around, that there's actually been a conversation between the two. And he doesn't kill him. Ultimately, decides to just leave the miserable old fuck in his dingy little or seedy motel alone, and goes to write his resignation letter to the FBI. Um, while he's packing up his stuff at the end of the episode in his office, uh, Skinner shows up down at his office, um, kind of time to have a heart to heart, tells him that his resignation is unacceptable. Yeah. He opens up about his time in Vietnam as a Marine. He opens up about losing faith in everything because he killed a kid. Which was you, so the kid really had a bunch good. of grenades on him or something, yeah. and was coming yeah. towards him, and he had to kill the kid to protect everybody, and just lost touch with the meaning behind anything. And I, I really enjoyed the scene. 
I I've seen vets open up like that before, and that's a really really tough thing to do, and it only really happens during truly important moments, and that yeah. was just kind of what that was supposed to represent. Um. Uh, so there's some thinking about it, but it's still ambiguous whether Mulder decides to resign or not. He goes home. X tells him that he tries to set him up to murder some dudes. Like, yeah, he tell or X has told these guys that are involved in Scully's shit that uh, he has evidence within his apartment and they're going to be there at eight fifteen that night. And if you want to, you want to get exact some revenge on these guys, be there to, you know, shoot them. And that was back to the whole trusting cry check, trusting everybody sort of thing that he does. Like he's just using you as a hitman at this point and you can't see it. Yeah. We also found out in that previous scene, by the way, kind of uh, missed it, but Mulder realizes that was Skinner that gave him cigarette smoking man's address. Yeah. Which is important because it's like, okay, now as an audience, we're like, we can fully trust Skinner. Cause that, that's something that, uh, you know, only an ally <laughs> would do. Yeah. Put his ass on the line and the cigarette smoking man did not die as a result of it. So his ass is in hot water. Yeah. So Mulder is sitting in a dark apartment waiting to kill this guy. And then instead, or right before they show up, Dana's hot ass sister shows up for a snatch pounding. But instead of that, <laughs> it was uh, to tell him that, you know, it's time. It's time to go say goodbye for real, that we're going to go pull the plug. And if you don't tell her that you love her right now, you'll never get that shot. Yeah. And so he he goes, and he talks to her for a little bit. Well, there there's that cool moment before he leaves because she he doesn't immediately leave with her. He tells her basically like she to leave because that dude who he's gonna uh, you know we think might he might murder this guy uh, is gonna show up any minute, and so he's trying to get her kind of out. And then there's that great sequence when he starts crying in his apartment. Where it's just David Duchovny just kind of breaking down, and he kind of slides down the wall. Um, and I, I thought that was a really sort of like touching moment as well. And when I read kind of like the reason how this this episode came into existence, I think it'll it'll be very very impactful. So I love I love that moment when he was crying because I don't think we've ever we've seen Mulder really cry before in in the show. Certainly not about Scully. Uh, maybe we saw him mention do something with his sister's abduction at some point, but I've never seen Mulder kind of break down like this. No, not yet. <laughs> not like that. Cause they were, yeah, the waterworks got turned on. They go to the hospital. There's this great, again, back to the artsy shots of where Scully is. She's, she can see kind of fuzzily that she's laying in her bed and you have all of the, the nurses and the doctors walking around in the ICU, but it's like not the hospital. They're in a forest. And then it turns into the real world. It's a great transition shot. A nurse notices that she's blinking. And then they or she comes back from wherever yep. she was. She's no longer brain dead. Um, she took, she gets visited and what's really odd is Mulder shows up for two <laughs> whole minutes, just long enough for Scully to, to look at him or him and say, I had the strength of your beliefs, which is another one of those weirdo, like it sounds good at the time, but what the fuck did that really mean? Sort yeah. Of thing. Doesn't he give her like, what is the videotape he gives her? Oh, it's, it's like a Super Bowl super cut of like, best of super bowls or some shit like that yeah i was like is this the first time we've learned that is scully like a huge football fan no or something? no no because her her answer is is sarcastic and it was those two and their sense of humor of busting each other's chops okay okay I, yeah i didn't get that when i sort of watched i'm like did i miss something is she a big like 
football field? <laughs> like, why would she nope. bring this? Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, and she, and even like in her like drowsy state, I think the mom says like, uh, you know, oh, hi, Fox, when he walks in, but she's like, Mulder, not Fox, because I, even her sister says that earlier on. It's like, my sister, I've been told not to call you Fox. And Mulder's like, by who? And then that's when he find, finds out, oh, that the smoke show sister. You're the smoke show sister of Scully. <laughs> that was a cool moment as well. And then uh, he gives her back Scully, the necklace too. At that point, yeah, yeah, gives it back to her. She puts it on, and then she asks one of the nurses, "Hey, there was this nurse that was like sucking face with me the whole time I was out. I would really <laughs> like to tell her how much I appreciate." And the nurse was like, there's nobody here like that. Like, I thought it was one of those X-Files endings where it was supposed to be like, ooh, spooky. But they didn't even use the, oh, yeah, there was a nurse there that had died in this ICU like 24 years ago or something. No, it's just that person's never existed. I will. I put in my notes. I was like, it was this. Was it a ghost? Was it an angel or something like that? Was it something obviously spiritual that was trying to like keep her sort of tethered, you know, as the boat is sort of tethered to the dock? But there is that sequence when the the tether breaks. And so like is the sequence with the dad, basically the dad is the one that kind of saves her and brings her back to the real world. Um yeah, it's it's unclear as to whether that was like an angel or a spirit or a ghost or something like that. It's one of those things where it's like, it's just kind of cool. It kind of works if you just run with it and go with it. It's it's one of those kind of endings. Just don't think about it for longer than two seconds. All right. Yeah. The other thing that I, I put in here, and I actually wanted to ask you, which was a, a strange sequence. Now, I've never uh, smoked before cigarettes or anything like that, and... I don't know the culture of sort of cigarette smokers. I know in the past you have smoked. So I was actually curious the scene, the cigarette machine in the hospital, which is already hilarious because, you know, people nowadays are like, what are you talking about? Cigarette machines and hospitals folks back in the day used to be able to smoke on airplanes. Uh, (laughs) I mean, that was the world that we grew up in. Right. So they have this cigarette machine in the hospital, which is already kind of goofy and funny. The lady walks up. And she asks Mulder, hey, do you have any change or something so I can get a pack of cigarettes? And and Mulder's like, no, I don't. So she walks over to the cigarette machine. And then she immediately walks back over to Mulder. She's like, oh, there's already a pack in there. But it's not my brand. And then walks away, which causes Mulder to get up and go get that pack of cigarettes. Is that something a smoker would do? If you just had a free pack of cigarettes sitting there and you you would decline you would not take that pack of cigarettes because it wasn't your preferred brand. Is that, is that smoke culture? They'd leave it for the next person. It seemed weird to me. No, no. You, I mean, I've smoked a good many cigarettes as well as entire cigarette packs that were not my brand that I accidentally got, or I bummed from somebody or something like that because cigarettes are expensive, man. (laughs) Yeah. And you, you, you have this thing inside your body that's like if you don't consume this drug you're gonna i'm gonna make you treat everybody you care about like shit for the rest of the day you're gonna be mad you're gonna just think about me all day like you gotta smoke so i don't know i think he she was saying it in such of like weird way He's like, I have to go look at this because she's trying to drop me a hint, sort of thing. Okay, do so you think she was in on it, trying yeah, to like? Well, okay. she she left the pack of cigarettes with the cigarette smoking man's address on it. Oh, see, I thought like she walked up to the cigarette machine, and she was like, maybe I missed the, her setting there. I thought she just found that there was already a pack in there, but it wasn't her brand, so that's why no. she, I'm not taking that. No, she put that pack of smokes there. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense then. I, I, I must have missed when she put that. Maybe I was writing a note or something. Um, so, okay, what did you think of the episode One Breath? Pretty good. Uh, there's a lot of weird, or I like it when they, or 
I love it when shows get to do really, really weird things with the episodes. In this case, it's the um, Scully tied to the dock or Scully on the table talking to her dad. Um, you get to do these stylized things that you're not normally used to seeing in episodes where it's just like, man, they must have had fun that day at work putting yeah. that shit together. Yeah, it was cool. Best example I've ever seen of that. I'm just going to Shanghai you here for a bit. Sure. Remember in Supernatural, the first time they showed death? Oh, yeah. He pulls up in the car, and he's walking along the street. You don't see his face, and he's, like, touching people, and they're dying, and they're playing the Woe Death song. Like, Yeah. What a fucking fun shot to do. (laughs) That was so cool. Yeah. Sorry. No, no. That's another show. If... Anyone out there is listening, you haven't watched Supernatural. Supernatural is an awesome show. I think it peaked in season five with the yeah. whole Lucifer stuff. And then it starts sort of really repeating itself as the seasons go on. But that's one of those those shows that's just consistent, right? Like you can watch season nine, a random season nine episode of Supernatural. Like I'm getting entertainment out of this. It's not as good maybe as when it first started, but I can still watch it. And, you know, just the chemistry between the two brothers, Sam and Dean and all that, it works. Um, but yeah, so I, I like this episode a lot. I think, you know, especially with the kind of like the beyond the sea element to it that they're trying to do. Um, I really sort of liked it quite a bit. I think other than the, the prologue, I thought the the prologue was probably the worst part obviously of this this episode but overall yeah i really dug this i kind of wish that this would have been much further into the season than it was because i don't feel like we really i think you know we get that calendar turn whatever in the last episodes like oh months have gone by but i didn't feel it because i just watched these back to back to back to back and it was like oh she's she was she's just here like i wish they would have found her a little bit later on down in the season uh, but overall really really like this one as well uh still no bad episodes for me this season um some fun facts about this one the episode title one breath comes from a line from scully's father when he talks to her during the episode the character the thinker who later appears in person in the episode anna Sazi, was named after online x-files fan the thinker so that's kind of cool it'd be cool to be a fan and just be able to say hey hey they put me in there like uh what was that the computer one we watched where it was like a read out a print out of all the different names of different forum fans from, yeah, from yeah. x-files that had been cool uh the episode introduces melinda mcgraw as scully's smoke show sister melissa mcgraw had previously worked with writers glenn morgan and james wong who specifically wrote the part with her in mind thoughts were given to having a romantic interest between Mulder and melissa but the concept never came to pass that would have been interesting uh david duchovny and this is where we get back to sort of like the beyond the sea ties to this so david duchovny was so amazed by the fantastic performance of Julian anderson in beyond the sea showing scully's feelings about losing her father that he asked the writers for an episode with emotions like that for him. The result was one breath in which Mulder displays his feelings for losing Scully. So kind of knowing that backstory after I watched it, it made a whole lot more sense why we get the scene of Mulder screaming and yelling at the, at the doctors, why we get the scene of Mulder sort of breaking down and crying when we get the scene of, you know, all of the different stuff that, that David Duchovny does in this episode makes a lot more sense knowing he was like, Oh, and also it's also a testament to him, an actor knowing another actor's sort of greatness when he was like, uh, Jillian did amazing and beyond the sea. Give me something like that to do, to be able to showcase my skills as well, because I can do that. And we both commented on beyond the sea, like her acting in that was fucking phenomenal. I mean, it was so good so cool good on david duchovny for not only recognizing that but then going to the writers and like give me my time to shine as well uh and then glenn Glenn morgan said of the episode duchovny challenged us to do a beyond the sea for him the show had been so dark and bleak and jim and i feel that there is a side to the paranormal that's very hopeful we wanted to do that side of it i thought it would be a great opportunity for duchovny but then the situation came up with jillian's pregnancy we needed to get her off of her feet anyway Consequently, Jillian Anderson, who had just given birth to her daughter Piper two days before the episode, spent the majority of the episode in a hospital bed. So she just 
she had her kid and she came right back to work, uh, which blows my mind. I'd be like, take some time. Uh, Chris Carter described the opening scene in which Scully discovers the truth about death, sadness, and sorrow as, quote, a way he would never imagine an X-Files episode to begin with, unquote us as well <laughs> we were quite shocked as well and that the related scene with scully's tombstone was quote a soft but beautiful opening that sets up the episode in a frightening way the image of scully in a boat was meant to symbolize being tethered to something very tenuously and that there was a chance for you to be cut adrift and slip into the unknown skinner facing the smoking man placed the character as both an antagonistic and institutional figure that tries to be both an fbi agent and an ally of Mulder and scully his refusal to allow the smoking man to smoke in his office quote speaks of skinner's alliances and allegiances to agent scully and his hatred of this man he cannot vanquish he cannot get rid of but he has to tolerate unquote Julian Anderson spent most of this episode uh, laying on a hospital bed taped up with various tubes. She would invariably fall asleep in between and during takes. This is the first time in which Mulder puts masking tape on his window in the shape of an X as a way to summon X. And One Breath earned a nomination for an Emmy Award by the Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences for Outstanding Cinematography. And I agree with that. I think the cinematography, the whole season, honestly, has been really stellar. Uh, fantastic. A lot of stuff with X in the shadows and stuff. It just looks very old school film noir y and, and really cool. And sweaty. Very, very sweaty. Very sweaty. Um, so that's it. Any other last comments you have about One Breath? I've got nothing. All right. Folks, thanks for listening to another episode of Exhuming the Fi- X Files here on the Outpost Unknown YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening and enjoying as we work our way through this series. Uh, next week, uh, we're looking at episode 9. I believe it's called Firewalker or Firestarter. I can't remember exactly what the episode is. But uh, I think Scully's back. We're going to get the duo back together to go investigate some Monster of the Week episodes. So that should be that should be fun. So hit that like and subscribe. Leave a comment. We'll see you next Friday on Outpost Unknown. See you then.